Hello, I'm Rachel, and I'm an analytical trading consultant with SAS's academic programs. And today, I'm here to talk to you about SAS On Demand for Academics versus SAS Via for Learners. If you're looking for an easy way to build analytic skills with the latest software, look no further. SAS has a couple of options that will work for you, no matter where you're starting from or what you're trying to learn. So my goal today is to walk you through some of the differences between our software for learning options, both available at no cost. So let's go ahead and get started with SAS On Demand for Academics. This is going to be our tried and true SAS 9 software, meaning that you can learn SAS programming and everything from your basic statistics to some of those advanced methods using either code or no code options. Both are going to be available to you within the environment. So here you can sharpen your skills in everything from data preparation to descriptive statistics to advanced statistical methods. You can even upload your own data up to five gigabytes of storage. Pretty cool, right? Let's go ahead and hop into the software and look around. So here I am on just a web page, right? I've logged in through a browser and I have access to SAS On Demand for Academics. This is gonna be my dashboard. Everybody is going to have SAS Studio by default. I've done a few projects using SAS Enterprise Guide and SAS Enterprise Miner, which is why they're showing up for me here. You'll also notice that there is access to SAS Pi, meaning if you're a Python geek like me and you want to configure some SAS behind the scenes hard work with your local install, you can do it using some of these steps here. Let's go ahead and hop into SAS Studio though. So SAS Studio is our newest programming interface. So again, it's just launching in a web browser here for us. As it comes up, we're gonna notice two different parts of our screen. So we have our big old canvas here. This is where the magic happens. This is where we're gonna get to do our coding, see our results, use our point and click tasks. But before we get to that, let me show you around the sidebar. So our top bar here is our server files and folders. This is where you can upload your own data and you can work with lots of different data sets and programs, save whatever you would like to your own personal storage. We also have our tasks and utilities, which are those point and click ways to walk yourself through building out some SAS coding without having to do typing yourself. We have snippets. This is where you can use saved bits of code and then just drop in, type in whatever data set you want to work with. We also have our libraries. That's where we're going to get to store many of our data sets for quick access and then our shortcuts. I'm going to go ahead and type out a short little program here so we can take a look at what that canvas offers us. No worries if you do not know the SAS programming language. I'm just going to go ahead and type in a quick little step here. This is one of our favorite things to do, just to display a data set that's available to us. I've typed up a quick little program here, and I can go ahead and click our running man, and we notice that our results get displayed right here within our canvas. So we see a nice little printout, a nice display of all the columns and rows available to us in the data set that I chose. Again, if I didn't want to do any programming, I can go over to my tasks and utilities. This has a whole bunch of tasks, everything from data to graphing to statistics. A lot of different tasks available to you. And as you drill down, maybe in the data tasks, I want to be able to filter my data. So when I double click this, this is going to open up my task window here. Under data, I can select the data set I want using a nice little point and click access. I'll choose that SAS cars. I can say I want to do our first filter on a variable. I'll click the plus button and I'll say make and I'll say I want my make to be equal to and we'll choose the Aldi cars. Notice that my code is being filled out on my side pane. I didn't have to do any of that coding. I just had to reference things in my task. Now, when I run this, it's going to run just like a normal SAS program. 
and I notice that I now have filtered my original data set to only cars with the make of Audi. Pretty cool, right? SAS On Demand for Academics has so many options and so many possibilities for you. But that's not the only thing SAS has to offer. So let's take a look at SAS Via for Learners. If you're thinking next generation, artificial intelligence, maybe some machine learning, some of those more advanced techniques, SAS Via for Learners is the tool that you may want to look into for your work. SAS Via for Learners is a wonderful tool for going through the entire analytics lifecycle. Just like in SAS On Demand for Academics, you'll have access to SAS Studio. So the look and feel is going to feel pretty similar, but underneath the hood, it's a whole different galaxy. So SAS Via for Learners provides access to an integrated suite of analytics tools. So you've got SAS Studio, but you've also got a few more applications at your fingertips. You also have access to in-memory analytics at scale and in record time. You're also able to get going really quickly with preloaded data sets and starter reports available to you. And if all this isn't cool enough, we've also integrated in Jupyter Lab so that you can code in Python or R from within this technology. Let's go ahead and hop in so I can show you around. Here in our Via for Learner starter page, you can go ahead and launch, but you can also take a look at all of those preloaded data sets that we have available if you want to take a sneak peek into what you might want to work with. I'll go ahead and launch, and whenever we launch, it's going to make us re-log in, which I'm going to do very quickly just using a SAS profile. If you don't already have a SAS profile or haven't already accessed SAS Via for Learners, there's links below to get you started. When I open up my SAS drive, it's going to pull me into all of the reports, data sets, models, the things that I've been working on. It's also going to show me that SAS content, the preloaded start reports and models and data sets that are available right off the bat for anybody accessing SAS Fire for Learners. We even have a bunch of courses in here so that you can follow along very easily. While it's still fresh in our minds, I'm going to take you through SAS Studio just so that you can see how similar the two interfaces are. I can do this through my Applications menu and opening up Develop SAS Code. So again, this is just SAS Studio behind the scenes, and you'll notice pretty similar, right? We have our Start page, which is the placeholder for our Canvas here. But if we click this plus button, we have an open program. We also see that we have in our file explorer, we have all of that SAS content. So the resources are available too here in SAS Studio. Running the same test, a little proc print, just typing out code that we want to use. Just to show, this looks very similar to SAS On Demand for Academics. So we run it and we get that same exact output. Looks slightly different, but it's similar enough that you could probably use either one interchangeably and still get the same thing done. Have the same tasks and snippets, so let's look at those just to verify. Here under our SAS tasks, we have many of the same ones. They might have slightly different names, but we're still able to do things like filtering our data. We saw that task over there in SAS On Demand for Academics. It's going to look almost exactly the same here where we select the data set that we want to work with. We'll find SAS help and then our cars. We can decide that we want to filter on that make. We want it to be equal to Audi. And our code is generated. And just like that, we can click our running man and it's going to produce those outputs for us. So now we see we've filtered our data set to only show the cars that have a make of Aldi. So SAS Studio, pretty similar in the two. So what's the difference here? Well, now that we're on SAS Via for Learners, we have that integrated suite of tools. Going back to the Applications menu, I can go into Explore and Visualize. This is our SAS Visual Analytics interface. 
So by default, it's going to open up and say, hey, do you want to start with a report that you've already accessed, maybe from any of our courses, that preloaded data that's already available at our fingertips? Or maybe we just want to start with our own data set. So I'll go ahead and say start with data just so that we can see there are so many data sets here and available for us. Maybe they're not aligned with the course or they don't have a starter report with them, but they are still available for us to use. So I'll go ahead and come in here and I'll find one of my favorite data sets, the heart data set. We can see some details before we even bring it into our report. And then once we bring it in, we notice that all of the variables are available to us on the side. We want to get going with our analysis really quickly. So I'll just go ahead and start selecting some. Maybe I'll choose blood pressure status and age at death. So I'll go ahead and bring those over. And we'll notice that there's a big auto chart button here telling us that SAS is going to choose the best chart for these two data items. And so we can see for each of our blood pressure statuses, high, normal, and optimal, we see our age at death. This doesn't really make sense, so we might need to do some data prep. We can do this right here within our report. Going back into our data pane, that's how we make those edits. I'm going to change the age at death to an aggregation of average. By default, it's going to be sum, but that's going to give us some really strange age at deaths when we start putting our data together. When I change it to average, we see our chart was updated. And now this makes a little bit more sense. On average, for people with high blood pressure status, have an age of 70.95. With normal, 70.286. And then optimal, 68.66. Wow, we're seeing some relationships right here just with a few clicks, drags, and drops. We can also choose what object we want by going to our objects pane and selecting one of our table values, one of our graph values. We can even do geomaps, controls for user input, and some higher analytics, like forecasting and text topics. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom, we also see that visual analytics includes SAS visual statistics, which lets us do clustering and regressions and SAS visual data mining and machine learning, where we can do some of those forests gradient boosting. Lots of options here, just in SAS visual analytics. The last thing I want to show off is Jupyter Lab. So Jupyter Lab is not a SAS technology, but it's integrated right here within SAS via for learners for ease of access. Going down to this little bottom bar, we see Jupyter. We'll go ahead and click which is going to open it up in a new browser tab. We see we have all of our courses available, all that preloaded data, and I already have two open just to show off what Jupyter Lab can do for us. We see some headers here, we see text, and we have code blocks. So this is a Python 3 notebook. So we're in SAS via for learners, but we're doing Python. We can also see an R demo where we're using the R kernel, we're using R code, we're still in SAS via for learners. So these Jupyter Lab integration is so big, allowing you to do your open source coding from the same resource. So you never have to leave SAS via for learners no matter what you're trying to accomplish. So this was a quick little video showing you the differences between SAS On Demand for Academics and SAS via for Learners. If you want more information, check out the links below and feel free to leave us any questions or comments you may have. For more tips and tricks like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Bye.